Since Sesame Street is geared towards little kids, it's basically a given that the lessons it tries to teach will be pretty obvious and tame in nature. Though that doesn't mean it isn't good or effective in how it does that, as it's one of the most beloved children's shows spanning over 50 years and counting for a reason. But the point is that because the demographic is small children, it usually goes out of its way to accommodate them and be very gentle when trying to impart a lesson. However, there is one special of theirs, specifically the 1996 Christmas special, Elmo Saves Christmas, that's a lot more blunt in the way it delivers its message, to the point that even adults can take the same thing away from it, while still most definitely being very kid-friendly all around. And today, I'd like to go over Elmo Saves Christmas, and what exactly makes it such an effective Christmas special, even for grown-ups. And obviously there will be spoilers ahead, so in case you don't want to know what happens, you should probably click off the video. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, Elmo Saves Christmas centers around Elmo freeing Santa Claus after he gets stuck in a chimney, and receiving a magic snow globe that'll grant him three wishes as a reward. And for his second wish, he wishes that it would be Christmas every day. Now just to clarify right off the bat, that doesn't mean the world enters a time loop similar to Groundhog Day, where it keeps being December 25th over and over again. Instead, the days keep moving like normal, but every day is now Christmas and everybody must behave how they normally would on the holiday. Now, Santa Claus tries to warn Elmo that while at first glance it looks like he might have done something great, if every day is Christmas, then it won't be special anymore, and will eventually become a very bad thing. And when Elmo doesn't believe him, Santa has one of his reindeer take him into the future to show him that if he doesn't reverse his wish, there will be terrible consequences. And indeed, Elmo makes a few stops throughout the year, and each time things only get worse and worse, culminating in him going a full year later to find Sesame Street in total ruin and everybody completely demoralized. Except for Oscar, that is, who loves that everybody's so miserable and that he has a ton of trash to do what he pleases with. Now, only some of the problems that have resulted from the endless Christmas is that nobody's been working, forcing many businesses to close and for everybody to fall out of practice with their given skills because they've been so busy celebrating which even leads to a surprisingly dark moment where some of the characters admit they don't know what they're going to do now that they've had to close their store. As well as that Sesame Street has become completely cluttered with trash and there are very few working decorations left. And according to Grover, Christmas trees are an endangered species, leading one to only imagine the environmental fallout that's occurred elsewhere. And there's also that half the town has lost their voices from singing so much, and Big Bird is extremely depressed and reduced to tears over the fact that he'll never see Snuffy again, since he left to visit his grandma for Christmas, and thus can't come back until it's over. And to top it all off, everybody is sick of Christmas, to the point that even the Count is tired of counting Christmases, and have come to see the holiday as a curse, rather than one of the greatest joys of the year. Everybody's so sick of it, in fact, that Santa Claus sees no point in continuing to deliver presents, as not only are he and his elves exhausted, but nobody really wants gifts from him anymore anyway, so he decides to retire and move to Florida. Which just goes to show that even a place as wholesome as Sesame Street can fall into despair under the right conditions. 
because the whole point of the special is that it can't be Christmas every day. Since not only would it not be special anymore, but after long enough start to become a burden. Or in a broader sense, that too much of a good thing can become a very bad thing. And the special does not pull its punches in that regard, as the segment where Elmo visits Christmas one year later is noted to be one of the darkest moments in the history of Sesame Street. But what makes it all work so well is how surprisingly realistic it feels to real life. Because if people really were forced to celebrate Christmas every day, after a while, people would start suffering from extreme financial problems due to being unable to work and having to constantly buy gifts. Deforestation would be exacerbated by people needing new Christmas trees. Friends who go away for the holidays wouldn't be able to see each other anymore, at least before the internet was widespread, but they still wouldn't be able to meet in person and everybody would come to hate the holiday because it's essentially ruining their lives. And as I just noted, it's that very realism that makes the special so effective. To put it another way, there are darker elements that could have been explored from the ramifications of Elmo's wish that adults would consider and children wouldn't, but it doesn't need them to more than get its point across. It pretty much covers everything you could think of anyway, just on a small scale. And because of that, the message can ring just as true for adults as children, especially with the many implications of those darker elements. Now, make no mistake about it, this is still Sesame Street. So there is still plenty of stuff just for the kids, as well as a few musical numbers. My only point is that the later parts of the special can be surprisingly applicable to the adults watching too, because the consequences of Elmo's actions are extremely realistic while still being completely kid-friendly, making it the perfect happy medium between the two. In other words, this is one case where going with a more realistic approach was most definitely a good thing, as I got into in another video, which you can find a link in the description to. But seriously, by Sesame Street standards, that sequence is about as dark as it can get, to the point that there's really only one moment of much-needed comic relief featuring Grover with nothing left to sell. Everything else is played dead straight, and as I just said, by Sesame Street standards, it's both very effective and pretty horrifying to see. Watching a town full of wholesome people become miserable, depressed, and scared all because they've been forced to celebrate Christmas too much really paints an accurate picture of what would happen under the same circumstances in real life. And even then, some would argue that the writers were being optimistic. That's how dire such a prospect really is. But once again, considering this is Sesame Street, everything turns out okay in the end. As Elmo goes back to the past before Santa gave him the snow globe and changes the timeline so that he never receives it thereby erasing the bad future entirely and ensuring that Christmas is only celebrated once a year. Because if what Sesame Street is reduced to when being forced to celebrate it every day can't convince somebody that such an idea is a horrible one, then nothing will. Because like I've said a few times, the special is still most definitely geared for small kids first and foremost. But the fact that it was willing to go so dark and realistic for the climax is pretty surprising, if still a pretty commendable choice. Especially because, as I already pointed out, it doesn't have to get gritty or family unfriendly to depict the realistic consequences of Elmo's wish, which is what also helps make it so effective. Because it's able to 
feel realistic while still being acceptable for small kids, which is a combination the show isn't able to achieve too often. And as a result, for kids and adults alike, the bad future sequence of Elmo Saves Christmas might just be one of the most terrifying in the entire history of Sesame Street. Okay, I think that ends this video. So now I'd like to hear from all of you. Do you think that Elmo Saves Christmas is a surprisingly good Christmas special by adult standards because of how realistically it's able to impart its moral? Or do you believe it's just a typical Sesame Street special and isn't really anything to write home about? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And please keep in mind that you don't have to agree with anything I said in this video if you don't want to. You can feel about Elmo Saves Christmas however you feel like, and if you think I couldn't have been any more wrong, that is perfectly okay. And thank you all for watching. I very much appreciate it, and I hope to see you all next time.